Okay. So everybody, welcome to uh, the um, the Kol Kol Shira uh, with the young Israel of Widmere. And of course, uh, we always do the class in partnership with uh, BRI, Breslov Research Institute. My dear Rabbi Reb Chaim Kramer, it should be well and to be able to continue the work that he does to help so many thousands and thousands of people. And uh, of course, are the yeshiva, yeshiva Tera Shimon, um, a wonderful yeshiva with Rabbi Mordechai Groner and all the work he does with all Nishmas Yisrael. It's unbelievable. And uh, we have a very exciting uh, parsha this week, parsha uh, Vayera. This is a, a super, super action-packed parsha. Uh, we're going to discuss many different things uh, regarding the parsha and the, some of the, some different nuances and so on, and uh, I hope we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, come up with some chidushim. Okay, so here we go. So again, it turns out now uh, last week's parsha Avram Avinu uh, did the bris milah, right? He did the bris milah. Uh, he was a hundred years old when he made his bris milah, and now it's day three. It's day three, and we open up, the parsha opens up with Vayera Elav Hashem Ve'elone Mamre Hu Yoshe Pesach Oyel Kechoyim Hayoy. Right? So Avram Avinu, we, hear, we see he's sitting, he's sitting at the uh, uh, opening of his tent, and he's waiting for any waref, uh, wayfarers to come by that he would be able to serve them because that's what he was. He personified the Midah of Chesed. Chesed. And he just had to do Chesed no matter what it was. He had to always be involved with Chesed. Now, even though, even though it was the third day, it was the third day of his meal, and we know which is the most painful uh, day at any time, uh, Chazal tell us anyone has some any kind of a medical procedure, the third day will be the most painful day. Here was the third day of his bris milah, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu came to visit Avram Avinu. Vayera Elav Hashem. Hashem came to Avram Avinu. Unbelievable. I want to turn now for uh, for a moment to the Rashi. Let's look at the Rashi over here. It's a beautiful Rashi on this on this here. Vayera Elav Levaker Sachola. HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to visit the sick. Avram Avinu just had the bris milah. So he was sick. HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to be mevakir chola. Amar Rav Chama Bar Chanina. Yoyim shlishi lemilasa yhoyla. Hoya, it was the third day of his milah. Uva HaKadosh Baruch Hu v'shal v'shlomo. HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to see how Avram Avinu was doing. Isn't that so beautiful? Just to think about that for a minute. How HaKadosh Baruch Hu came to visit Avram Avinu. Now listen to this. This is amazing. Look at the next words of Rashi. The Pasuk says, Be'elone Mamre, in the plains of Mamre. Now, who was Mamre? Who is this? Rashi says, Who should nosan lo'yetza al hamila? Lefichach nigla ela bechelko. Avram Avinu, when Hashem told him to do the bris milah, was wondering, hmm, should I, should I do this, keep this private? Or should I go out and tell the world what I'm about to do? Should I tell the world what I'm about to do? He went to discuss it with Mamre, his neighbor. Mamre told him, go out and tell the world what you're doing. I saw something else so beautiful. That he also gave him a, a, an etzah, on the Mila. He gave him an eight on the Mila. Al Hamila. You know, when we make the blessings in the morning on our tefillin, right? We say, Lehaniach tefillin. And then we make the next blessing, we say, Al Mitzvah tefillin. Right? When we put on the Rosh, we say, Al Mitzvah tefillin. Avram Avinu was wondering when I make the bracha for the mila, should it be should it be al hamila or limila? How should I make the blessing? Mamre told him to make it al hamila, and that's how we make the blessing today. The Moel on the eighth day when he makes the blessing, 
the, uh, before the Mila, he says uh, the brach of Al Hamila. And that's what we do. So there was another idea that he was able to give him the idea to say Al Hamila. Now, now it says, next words in Rashi, Yosha. Yosha Bikesh Lamay. Avravinu, when, when, when Hashem came to Avravinu, he wanted to stand up. It's only proper, right? You know, if the if the rabbi comes in to the room, you stand up. If the, they take the Sefer Torah out, you stand up, right? So, of course, HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'chvayt of Atzmai came to visit Avravinu. He wanted to stand up. Of course. So what does Hashem say to him? What does Hashem say? Amar Loi HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shev V'ani Emod You sit and I will stand. It's going to be a simon for the children. What is that? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that I will be standing and the judges will be sitting. And the judges will be sitting. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, look in the future, I'm going to stand. And so I'll stand now, Avram, you sit. You sit. You're not feeling well. You sit. Pesach Oyo, look what he says. Leroy's im yesh oive vishov sheyichinis libebeisai. If there will be a wayfarer, somebody will come by and come into his house. Kichoyim hayoyim. Look at these words. It was the heat of the day. What does Rashi say? Hoytzi hakadosh baruch hu chama menartika. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took the sun out of its casing. Did you know that? Did you know that the sun is sitting in a casing and HaKadosh Baruch Hu keeps it in case? Hashem took the sun out of the casing. Do you know it was the hottest day? It must have been 140 degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit. It must have been about 140 degrees. It must have been so impossible. Hashem took the sun out of the casing. Could you imagine how hot that was? But look what he says now. So he shouldn't be matriach. He shouldn't be uh, 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 busy, bothered with passer buyers, with people coming in and guests. Lefi she'iru mitzdayer. Therefore, there shouldn't be any uh, any uh, 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 wayfarers coming by. So therefore, Hakadosh Baruch Hu brought the malachim in the image of people, so you should have somebody. So let me ask you a question now. Okay, I'd like to see if we can get an answer. Okay, here's the question. HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes it very hot, so nobody should be able to go outside. Nobody can go outside, should go outside, because they shouldn't bother Avram Avinu. So then why does Hashem send the Malachim? Why does He send the angels? And in other words, it's so hot outside, it's so difficult, and, 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 and now HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going gonna, is gonna to have Avram Avinu prepare food for the angels? You ever think of that? It was so hot. It was so, so hot outside. Now Hashem made it so hot so no one else should come out, but now He sends the angels, and now the angels have to come by, and now Avram Medina is going to work so hard. He's going to work so hard in order to be able to prepare them their food. So why does Hashem make it so hot for him? You ever think of that? Listen to this idea. You know, you know that uh, that 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 uh, that the, the, the um, uh, in Pirkei Avos it says that there's no there's no uh, there's no uh, a, a, a comparison, right? Befum sar befum sar agra, right? If a person does something and he puts a lot of effort and a lot of energy into doing a mitzvah, it's not the same as if you just do the mitzvah and it goes easy. If it's a nice day outside and it's breezy and it's comfortable and he goes and he collects all the food to bring them and everything he does, okay, that's good. That's very nice. But but if it's so hot, that's the fumsar agra. Now, listen, I want to tell you something amazing. 
we know we know that Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, last week's parsha in Lech Lecha, by the Bris Bein Avsar, when he had when we had the the uh, the, um, uh, the the uh, the the treaty of the halves, right? Hashem had him cut the animals in half, and he had to go between them, right? Hakadosh Baruch Hu put Ad, uh, Avravinu into a very deep anesthetic sleep. It said he went into a tardema. Tardema. Tardema means it's an anesthetic sleep. There was two times in the Torah, the Torah uses the word tardema. The first time the Torah used the word tardema was with Adam, when Hashem took the bone from Adam to make Chava. Remember that? Right? He took the bone out of Adam, so he put him into an anesthetic sleep. He would be able to do that procedure. Here HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts Avram Avinu into an anesthetic sleep and he shows him, he shows him the 400 years that were going to be in Mitzrayim. And he showed him all the generations. He saw all the generations. And he saw even us now. And he saw those Jews in Amsterdam last week that got beaten. He saw that too. He saw everything. Could you imagine what a nightmare he saw? What a nightmare that was? But then Hashem says at the end, Hashem says, you know, you're going to go out of Egypt, Berechush Gadol. You're going to go out with a lot of wealth, a big wealth. And we don't see Hashem says that Avram Avinu says anything to Hashem. He doesn't say anything. He accepts it. Now the three Malachim come this week, right? They come this week. We had the Malach Mechoyal that came. And the Malach Mechal came to tell them the news. He was one of the Malachim, the Malach Mechal. He came to tell them the news that Sarah was going to have a baby, that Yitzhak would be born. He told them the news, and he left. There were two Malachim left, the Malach Gavriel and the Malach Rafael. The Malach Gavriel, the Malach Rafael. The Malach Gavriel was, was, was there... Was there, was there to destroy Sodom. The Malach Rafal was there to heal Avram Avinu, to bring the healing. Now listen to this. Avram Avinu tells these Malachim, you have to eat. You need to eat. And the Torah tells us, he prepared bread, lechem, the chema, chema's butter. Nice, right? Well, you, could you imagine Avram Avinu gave them nice hot bread? With butter? Come on, is that the night? That's the best, right? You get a nice piece of hot, you get a hot piece of bread, and you put butter on it, it's kishmak, right? And then Abraham Avinu served them next, he served them tongue sandwiches. Tongue sandwiches. With condiments, he put, the Torah says he put chardal on it. There was mustard. Abraham Avinu gave them condiments. Unbelievable, right? <laughs> <coughs> He probably gave them ketchup also, you know, because I know a lot of you listening like ketchup. They don't like mustard. So he probably gave them ketchup also. All right, either way, either way. Now, what was that, What was Abraham Avinu really doing here? By giving them to eat butter and then meat. There's something wrong with that, right? Something wrong with that. You can have you eat your butter with your bread and then you can eat your meat you can have your butter with your meat. What's going on here? Right? And Avravinu is insisting that they eat. They must eat. They must eat. Okay. Uh, later on, now about, uh, about uh, 200, about almost about 300 years later, it's going to be Kabbalah Satayra. Right? We're going to be on Stanley on Harsinai to accept the Torah. The Medrash tells us that the Malachim were complaining that Tana Hadcha Allah Shemayim. Leave your Torah in Shemayim. Leave it for us. Don't give it to the Jewish people. Leave it for us. Says the Holy, says the Holy, uh, uh, it's far unbelievable, unbelievable, Mamish, unbelievable. Listen to this idea. What are the Malachim? What are the Malachim? The Malachim are fire. A malach is fire, right? They're fire. 
Avram Avinu says to give them butter, and then he gives them meat. Can I ask you a question? If you take butter and you cook it together with the meat, that's not good, right? Why the Torah says, Lo tevashel gidi b'chalev imo. You can't cook the the meat of the with the and the milk with the mother. You can't do that. Yes, you want to say something? Yes, what? What do you want to say? I learned that today in school. You learned? Wow, look at that! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Wow, see that? Hashkacha pratit, mamash. Okay, listen, listen, okay. What happened was, when Abraham Avinu gave them the butter, and it's a malach, the malach ingested it, it's fire. And then he gave them the meat. Guess what? That's meat. It's fire. So that means the malach cooked, cooked the meat together with the butter. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's no good. We just said you don't want to do that. So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to the Malachim, I'm going to give the Torah to the Jewish people, and then they said, no, leave it up here. Hashem said, I can't leave it for you. You already ate, you already transgressed the Torah. You ate milk, you, you cooked milk and meat together. You cooked the butter with the meat together. And that's what it was already preparing. When it came to Avram Avinu, when it came to Avram Avinu, and Avram Avinu was was over there, and 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 he was accepting, and he was accepting that 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 we would be slaves in Mitzrayim for four hundred years. The Rechush Gadol wasn't regular physical wealth; he wasn't interested in the regular wealth. The Rechush Gadol is the Torah. The Torah is our greatest wealth. The greatest money that we have, the greatest wealth that we have is our Torah. And what we amass with our Torah is the greatest, greatest wealth that we have. And Avramino understood that we have to be broken down a little bit. We have to be broken down a little bit in order to be able to be, accept the Torah, to get the Torah. That's why he was okay with it. That's why Avramino was okay with it. Now when it came to Sodom, wait a second, the Malach Gavriel came there and told him, hey, I'm going to destroy Sodom. Avram Avinu is uh, davening. Oh, yo, yo, he has a long davening. Uh, Hashem, you know, uh, maybe there are maybe there are fifty, maybe there are fifty people that are tzaddikim. And is it right to destroy the tzaddikim together with the other people in Sodom? Hashem said no, but there aren't fifty. Then Avram Avinu says, "Okay, Hashem, how about maybe there's forty-five? Maybe there are forty-five tzaddikim." Excuse me, Hashem says, no, there aren't 45. He says, okay, how about 40? No, there aren't 40. Okay, how about 30? No, there aren't 30. How about 20? No, there aren't 20. How about 10? And Hashem said, there aren't 10. And Abra Avinu stopped there. He stopped there. The Zayir asked the question, why did Abra Avinu stop? Why didn't he say that there's maybe only one? Maybe there's one tzaddik. Why did he stop? Why did he stop? All right, but he did stop. He stopped. And that's our job today is to co- keep going on. And we always daven. And especially this, the situation going on in Eretz Yisrael and all over the world, wherever Jews are. We see what just happened in Amsterdam. And we see what happens in America all the time. We see over this past Shabbos, there was a young man walking his children to shul on Shabbos, and a guy came to try to kidnap his, his son, his little boy. Unbelievable. I mean, what a miracle that it was. He was holding his child's hand. What a miracle it was. He was holding his child's hand. We see this. We just all have to daven. We all must daven, and we should never, ever say, Oh, what's my feel going to be? What is Hashem going to listen to? Of course, we don't know. We have to keep davening and davening and davening and davening and davening and encourage more people to daven. And encourage more people to daven because we never ever know. We never ever know which tefillah. Whose tefillah is going to be the tefillah that's going to help. 
we don't know, and therefore it's always important, we always need to keep davening and davening more. It's very, 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 very crucial. Very crucial. Okay. That's that we see from there. And that's why Avram Avinu was davening for them, but not when Hashem said that you're going to be enslaved in Mitzrayim for 400 years. He didn't daven because he understood that we have to go through the difficulties of being birthed of being birthed as a nation, as being birthed as a nation, and therefore we'll be be able to become the people that we have to become. Okay, we understand that now, right? So we understand why Abram Avinu gave them food to eat. We understand why Hashem made it so hot, because of Lefum Sa'agra, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give him more opportunity to have more of a mitzvah, to put more, to exert more energy, to exert more energy into doing the mitzvah. Okay, fine. That's, that's the idea, that's the ideas that we have, that we have on, on, on that. Now, now we, we have a few different, a few different things we're going to talk about now, uh, going on, all right? Now, uh, we have, here, here, next, next thing we know, Next thing we know in the parsha, uh, Avram Avinu we know is living in 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 the Chevron. Avram Avinu is living in the Chevron area. So I got two questions. What's your question? Go ahead. All right. First question is why why do we assume that the heat affected Avraham? You know, there's a possibility that Hashem made the heat. So that no one would come and bother Abraham, but does it directly say that the heat affected Abraham? Just like with Kal Yisrael, the idea of the cloud by day. Oh, so, so well, that's there's... good. Good, very good point. Very good point. So we okay. So 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 what what Zush is asking is like this now is when we were in the desert for forty years. And we were in the, under desert conditions, and it was very, very hot in the desert. We know that. And Hakadosh Baruch Hu gave us the Anani Akavu, right? The Anani Akavu was the clouds of glory that 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 in, that, that, in cover, that covered our camp, mm-hmm. and we were protected by that, and therefore we had nice temperature control inside, right? Hakadosh Baruch Hu made it nice. It was sixty-eight degrees perfectly every day. Right? And it was perfect temperature. It was gorgeous. Unbelievable. Right? And we spoke about that. That We also had, when we were walking, right? A Kodesh Baruch Hu made it that we had, you know, those walking sidewalks, you know? You just stood over there and then, and then and it all moved for you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable what we had. But, by, but, but it doesn't say that Avram Avinu had the clouds of glory. It doesn't say that. When Avram Avinu, again, he was working... And and it was it was must have been difficult for him. Either way, it was difficult for Avram Avinu. If you think about it, it was the third day of his mila, right? Yeah. It was right. the th- like Rashi told us. It was the third day of the mila. So if it's the third day of mila, he was uncomfortable. And if it was mm-hmm. hot, but either way, either way, this is what Hashem did because he wanted to bring the three angels. He didn't want Avram Avinu to be involved in you know just other people. He brought the angels specifically in order to prepare us. For Matan Torah. You know, this was all a preparation for Matan Torah so the angels cannot say, leave the Torah for us. You understand? If this didn't happen, if this didn't happen, that the angels came there and the Avravinu served them the butter. Why does the Torah go through the idea to tell you that there was butter and he goes through the idea to tell you that there was bread and he gives us the idea that there was meat? You know, you understand now? Look, do you know, do you know that if you have a loaf of bread on the table, right? And you're serving dairy, okay? And you have dairy. You cannot take that piece of, lo- that loaf of bread and put that same loaf of bread on the table with meat. Because the, da- the, bu- the, 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 the bread that was on the dairy table is assumed that it got butter on it, it assumed it got cream cheese on it, it got uh, whatever, some kind of dairy product on it, right? But the Torah tells us that he had bread and meat, and then he ate another tongue sandwich with the meat, with the bread. 
You understand? Unbelievable how the Torah gives us, it gives us the, the definite, it finds everything that happened over there for this reason. Unbelievable. This was a vart from the stipler, the holy stipler. The holy stipler said this vart, that's his vart, it's not my vart, that's from the holy stipler. The stipler said this idea that it was the malachim that Hashem gave them the meat that they would have to eat it in order for them to be able to have eaten and cooked together meat and butter, right? Together, basar becholov, like we said, aloy tevashel, gedi bechalei vimo, you're not allowed to do that, and they transgressed on that. Now, the malachim, okay, does that answer your question, Abzushia? Okay, we're all right now? Well, that's the first question. But yes. the second question yeah. is, what kind of mishigas is this? Uh, ain't, uh, angels, uh, angels don't eat. Not only do they not eat, uh, where does it say in Hazal that the angels are under the co- the kosher restrictions? Where? It, 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 no, 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 no. No one was under, const- uh, under kosher restrictions at that time. The Torah wasn't given yet. Right? No, 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 the Chiddush, no, no, the Chiddush, no, the Chiddush is, the Chiddush is here, that the three, that, 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 that Rashi is going to tell it, the next Rashi tells us, that Avram Vinu knew that they were angels. And Avram Vinu insisted that these angels are going to eat, even though they don't need to eat. They don't need to eat. Angels don't need to eat. Right? Oh, but of course, but that was the whole point. But Abraham Vina says, no, no, you're going to (laughs) eat. You're here. You're my guest. You're going to eat. I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch you put that food in your mouth and you're going to (laughs) eat. What's that? What, Mordecai, you want to say something? Yeah, more. Go ahead. Well, this was, this was so he had his evidence to argue as to why Hashem need why they needed to have the Torah for uh, for the Jewish for people down here, not on not, not up on high. Hashem should yeah. give us the Torah. You understand? Right, let's go. Well, let's go on. Let's go on. We have so many more things to discuss now. Here we go. Now, uh, 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 the, the the Malachim. The Malachim, both Malachim, the Malach Raphael, the Malach Gavriel went down to Sodom. It took them about a day to get down there because Avram was davening, like we said, for the for the Sodomites, right, and the Amorites, and that was that they they should be they, they should the, 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 be saved and so on. Now he gets to the city. He gets to the city, and it says the Torah tells us that Lot was by the gate. Lot was doing the, uh, he was doing the Shmirah. He was in charge of the Shmirah that day at the gate. You know, like when we come to, when we live in Ephrat, so when you come to the gate, there's a gate there, right? You have a guard sitting at the gate, right? And he may he let you in, right? At that night, that was Lot, twins was sitting there. He was sitting at the gate. He was doing his Shmirah. Okay, good. He sees that there are, there are guests. Now, wait a second. We know in, in Sodom, it was illegal to have a guest. It was illegal to have a guest. You weren't allowed to have any guests. They couldn't do any any chesed. But Lot lived with Avram Avinu so long that it rubbed off on him that he had to do chesed anyway. <laughs> he had to do chesed. So he invites he invites these malachim. He doesn't know. Avram Avinu knew they were malachim. He has no idea that they're angels. He has no idea. He invites them to his house. Now what happened? He, they come to his house, and he puts them to sleep, and what happened then? We all know what happened, right? All the people of Sodom got together. It says the young ones and the old ones. And they came to knock on the door, bang on the Lot's door. We want those guests. Give us those guests that you have. Wow. Lot says, I'm not giving you the guests. What are you talking about? No, we know that there are guests in your house. And it's illegal to have guests over here. It's illegal. And Lod says to him, Lod says to them, well, listen, I can't, I can't, not letting them go out. And he says, listen, I have two daughters. I'll give you the daughters. Keep my daughters. Do what you want with them. Don't take my guests. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that he said that. Unbelievable that he said that. Anyway, make a long story short. We know 
that uh, that he wound up saving. He wound up, the malachim wound up getting getting Lot his wife, right? Aishas Lot. He wound up getting the daughters, and they left, and they and it, they pulled them out of the house, and they were able to leave the city. And the angels gave them instructions: You're not allowed to look back. You're not allowed to look back. Don't look back. It's an amazing thing that happened in in the story over there, uh, in middle in middle of, in middle of that story, right? In the middle of that story, uh, when they're leaving. When they're leaving over there, it says that Hashem remembered Avram Avinu. You know, there's a pusik stuck in there that Hashem remembered Avram Avinu. Now the question is, what is Avram Avinu doing over there, right? What is Avram Avinu doing in the middle of the story when he's telling them the instructions? You know, you're not allowed to look back. Uh, don't look back, and 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 you're not and and, and and don't be and don't be involved. And we just have to, we have to just go and, and save ourselves. We have to save ourselves. The Pasuk says like this, Right? The Pasuk Hashem saved Lot from the Hafecha. You know when we say the word Hafecha? You know when we say the word Hafecha? We say the word Hafecha on Friday night in the Lechadodi. We say that word Hafecha from that from the destruction. Save them from the destruction. Save them from the destruction. Hashem saved Lod and the daughters from the destruction because of the schus of Avraham Avinu. Schus of Avraham Avinu. What happened now? Uh, that next day, the next day, the daughters of Lot saw that there were, there were cities were destroyed. There was nothing there. They were all destroyed. And they thought... And they thought that there's nobody left in the world. There's nobody left in the world. There's only us and our father. And it's our job to have children to have the to, to, to keep the world going. So they gave so they gave uh, uh, some wine to drink. They made a plan and they gave wine to drink to their father. And the older daughter was with the father the first day. Okay, and then the next night it was the younger one. From the older daughter came what? Moab. And she said, why was it called Moab? May Avi. My father, my father, Moab. Right? And the second daughter, okay, anyway, now, we know that from Moab came Rus. Rus came from Moab, right? Rus came from Moab. She was the princess, she was the daughter of the king of Moab. Right, the king, she was the daughter, and we know that Rus Rus is the is the grandmother, the grandmother of David Amelech. David Amelech, David Amelech. I was like Hashem to be in, in Hebron, and you can go in Hebron, you can go to the kever of Rus and Yishai. Unbelievable. To the kever of Rus and Yishai. Unbelievable to be able to be there. And David over there. Anyway, now the question is asked: Why, why does the the why does the the neshama of David Amelech have to come from such an immoral act, from such an immoral act? And it's brought down from the Kisvei Arizal that really the the sitra the sat, the satan doesn't like when there's, there's going to come a big neshama into the world. He doesn't like that. Why? Because that's going to bring, Mashiach is going to bring the salvation for the whole world. Right? All the riches is going to go away from the world. There won't be any more riches in the world. And it's Hashem is going to bring back the salvation, everything, tranquility to the world. The, 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 the Satan doesn't like that. The Satan likes when there's problems in the world. He doesn't like when there's, everything is, is peaceful and everything is good in the world. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with his, with, his, with his great wisdom, he figures out that it put these neshamas into, into these type of people, into these type of relationships, 
where the Satan won't say anything because ah, nothing's going to come from that. If this big soul goes in there, a relationship with immorality, how's anything going to come from that? But Hashem knows. Hashem knows. We know that Rabbi Akiva, the greatest of the great, Rabbi Akiva was the greatest of the Tanayim. His, he, he came from Gerim, right? His parents weren't even Jewish. He's from Gerim, right? We know Hillel. We know Hillel. He, Hillel's Rebbe was Shmai and Aftalia. Shmai and Aftalia, they were, they were also converts. Hillel, the great Hillel. His, the Rebbe of Hillel was Shmai and Aftalia. They were converts. You see how, how, how HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how HaKadosh Baruch Hu tries to put the, the, the souls, special souls, he tries to put the souls in different people that would not necessarily come out. And it, it, it would, wouldn't be, and, and that's what he does. Hashem does the most amazing things. He hides things. And I, it, it, but we always have to believe and know that Hashem knows what he's doing. Hashem always knows what he's doing. And Hashem is always looking out for Klal Yisrael. Now, we go on in the Parsha. We go on in the Parsha. And we have another story with Avi Melech. Avimelech takes Sarah. Second time Sarah is taken now. Right? Avimelech takes Sarah. Right? First Parai took her. First Parai took her. We can talk about that for a second. We can talk about that for a second. You know, last week's Parsha, when Avravinu, when Avravinu went down to, to Mitzrayim, and he said, tell, tell, uh, uh, tell them that you're my sister. Don't say that you're my wife. Say that you're my sister, say well, they'll do good for me. Can I ask you a question? Lot was with him. Who, who was Lot to Sarah? Does anybody know? Lot was Sarah's brother. Sarah Imenu was Lot's sister. How do you like that? Now wait a minute. When he went down to Mitzrayim and, and the Egyptians were giving all the gifts to Avraminu because he was the brother <coughs> and they wanted he wanted to court Sarimenu, right? They wanted to court Sarimenu. They gave all the gifts. Light could have said, wait a second, I'm the real brother. But he didn't say anything. That was another merit that Lot had that he was saved. That he didn't say that he was the rightful brother and Avram, you're not the brother. He didn't divulge that. Therefore, he had another merit. Not, light has another merit. Um, another beautiful idea on the on the on the. Okay, so so um, uh, light light is taking. Now, I want to talk about now for a second. You know that they, they, they were they were the ten tests, the ten tests of Avram Avinu, right? He had ten tests, right? In Pirkei Avos, in Pirkei Avos, it says that Avram Avinu be'esen nisyonos haya Avram. Avram Avinu had ten tests. You know, Rashi, Rashi has his understanding of the ten tests, and the Rambam has his understanding of the ten tests. I want to go over the ten tests with you right now, the ten different tests, okay? Avram Avinu said, uh, according to, to Rashi, according to Rashi, the first third, uh, Avram Avinu was hiding in a cave when, when he was in Ur Kazdin. He was hiding in a cave from Nimrod. Nimrod wanted to kill him. For 13 years, he was hiding in a cave. Rashi says that was the first test of Avram Avinu. That was the first one. The second test, Rashi says, when he was in Or Kazdin, Nimrod threw him into the burning fire. Remember, he threw him into that burning fire? When Nimrod threw him into the burning fire, that was number two. Number three, Rashi says, with Lech Lecha, last week's Parsha, leave from your place, leave from your father's home, leave from the place that you were born to a place I'm going to send you. The fourth test, according to Rashi, was when Avram Avinu came to Canaan, he came to Israel, there was no food, and, and he had to go down to Egypt. That was the fourth test. The fifth test, Rashi says, was Sarah was taken by Parai. The sixth test was the four kings against the five kings, where Avram Avinu uh, took 318 men, and Avram Avinu, Avram Avinu uh, uh, won the war with the four, the, against the four kings, and he was able to free Lot. The seventh, the seventh uh, uh, one was the Brisbane Absarim, the treaty, 
the treaty, the 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 the, the, uh, the, the treaty of the halves, and Avram Avinu was told that he that his children will be enslaved for four hundred years. That was test seven. Test number eight was the bris mila. Bris mila. Test number nine was Yishmael was sent away, and with uh, with Hagar. And test number 10 was the Akedah itself. And that's what we're going to get to now. According to, according to the Rambam, Rambam has a different understanding. He says that Lech Lecha was the first test because the Torah speaks about that. It makes sense because the Torah, the first test that we talk about is Lech Lecha that we see in the Torah. The second, he said, is the hunger that took place, the hunger that took place in, 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 in Canaan. The third one, he says, Saru was taken as a captive by Paroi. The fourth one, he said, was the four kings against the five kings. The fifth one, he says another one here, that that other, that other uh, Avram had to marry Hagar. Avram had to marry Hagar was another one of the tests. Avram Avinu was very pure. He didn't want to have to be dealing with, with Hagar, but he did that. Because that's what his wife asked him to do, and that was another test, and that makes a lot of sense according to the Rambam. All right, that was the that was uh, that was the the, the uh, test number five. Uh, test number six was the bris. Test number seven was Avi Melech took Sarah. That makes sense also. Test number eight was Hagar was sent away. Test number nine was Yishmael was sent away, and test number ten, according to everybody, was the Akeda. Okay, does everyone hear that now? Right, the Akedah was where Akedah's Baruch Hu told, where Akedah's Baruch Hu told Avraham Vino to take your son. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable words that Hashem uses. And let's look at the words inside. I'm going to read it to you right now. We say these words every day. We say, we say these words every day when we say the, when we say the Parsha, the Akedah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me let me let me just open it up. I'll read it to you inside. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Here to be right here. Here. Here we go. And I come to Spark who's testing Avram. Nisa es Avram. And he says to him, Avram. He says to him, Avram. He says, here I am, Hashem. Take your son, your beloved one, that you love. Take Yitzchak. Again, Lech Lecha. See that the same words, right? Go to the mountain of Moriah. Go to the one of the mountains, Asher Omar Lecha, that I'll tell you. Same thing as Asher Aretz Areka. Same idea, right? By came Avram Baboker. And Avram got up in the morning. Can I ask you a question? What does it mean Avram got up in the morning? You can only get up in the morning if you went to sleep, correct? If you didn't go to sleep, you can't get up in the morning. That means Avraham Avinu knew he was in the morning he was going to be he was going to have to go and slaughter his son, and he was okay with that. He was able to sleep. It shows you the great level of amuna that Avraham Avinu had. That even though Hashem said to him right before that that your child that Yitz, from Yitzchak will be Yikari lecholam and the, the nation will come from Yitzchak, and now he, Hashem tells him slaughter him. You would have thought Avram Avinu would have said, uh, "Hey Hashem, didn't you just tell me? Didn't you just tell me that Yitzchak is going to be is going to be the one that the nation is going to come from? So if I slaughter him, how's that going to happen?" He doesn't say that. Not only that, it says Vayash came Avram Baboki, it means he was sleeping. He was okay. He was accepting of Hashem. He didn't care. Hashem said to do that. He said it was okay. He didn't care. It was okay with him. He was okay with it. Unreal to understand that he got up in the morning. And he saddled his donkey. Can I ask you something? Avram Avinu was a fabulously wealthy man. He was fabulously wealthy. He had many, many servants and stable boys and stable people. Don't you think they could have got his donkey ready? No. He said, this is a mitzvah. I'm going to do it myself. 
This is a mitzvah. I don't want anyone to do it for me. So it says, And he took the children, He took the wood, and he took the things, and he was headed out on the trip. When it was the third day, but he lifted his eyes. He saw the place out from a distance. And Avram said, El Na'arov to his ch- to the children, Shavu lochem po, you stay here, Machamor, Vaniva na'ar, Nelcha ad kov, and Ishtachma v'nashuv aleichem. How old was Yitzchak at the time of the Akedah? Does anybody know how old Yitzchak was? Yitzchak was, was, does anyone know? Yitzhak was 37 years old, I'll tell you. Yitzhak was 37 years old. That means Yitzhak was, was okay with the idea of being slaughtered on the, on the altar. Right? Because think about it. Avram Avinu was now 137 years old. Yitzhak was 37 years old, right? If Yitzhak Avinu didn't want to do this, he could have definitely overpowered Avram Avinu. But he didn't. But he didn't. He went and he said, I want to be, I want to be on the on the Mizbeah. And Avram took the wood of the Ola for the wood for the sacrifice. And he had Yitzhak carry it. And he took in his fire, the, he took in his hands the fire, and he took in his hands the, the knife, the knife, okay? And these famous words, it bring, gives me a chill every time I read it. And he said, my dear father, yes, my dear son, I see we have fire, we have wood. But where is the sheep? Where is the little animal that's going to be for the Ola, for the burnt offering? And Avram said, You, my dear son, you are going to be, you are going to be the Ola, you are going to be the sacrifice. And they went to that. What? You have a question? No. Okay, all right, here, let me continue. But even Shem Avram met some Mizbeach, and Avram built the Mizbeach, he built the altar. By Yarech has eight, seven, he arranged the wood. And Avram Avinu put Yitzchak on top of the Mizbeach, on top of the wood. Unbelievable, unbelievable here. I want to tell you a story that happened to me. It was a few years ago. I was with the Kaidan of a Rebbe. He came in from Eretz Yisrael, and he came to visit and he stayed, he stayed in our house. Uh, he stayed a few times in our home. I was just by a chasna, uh, by the Perkel chasna last week, and I met the Kaidan of a Rebbe, Baruch Hashem. And I remember the, the Pshad he told me. We were sitting in the car, and he was saying the Karbanot in the morning. And he read this Pasuk, and he said, Mimala Eitzim. That Avram, that Avram put Yitzhak, Mimala Eitzim. How do you say advice in Hebrew? Advice is Eitzah. And Eitzah is an advice. Eitzah. I need, I need advice. I need advice. Eitzah. The Rebbe said, put him on, when you're serving Hashem, you have to always put things above your head. You can't always make sense of things Hashem tells you to do. If you try to make sense of things that Hashem tells you to do, it always has to be mama'ala him over the him over the ideas, over the advice. If you do things like that, you'll always be successful. 
And that's such an important lesson that we have in life, and that's such a very, 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 very important lesson. And then, and that's the Akedah. Okay, we know that the thing that Hakadosh Baruch Hu saved, uh, saved, uh, saved Yitzchak, and 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 of course there was no Akedah, and and uh, and the, the Malach said he just wanted to test. He just wanted to test them. I want to read one thing inside now. Because we we need always I, I mean we spoke about everything outside and uh, but I, I want to le- always learn something here from Rav Nelson. I found this beautiful this beautiful idea here on these on this pasuk by Yaakov es Yitzchak benai. You know it's called the Akeda, right? They call it the Akeda. What does the Akeda mean? He was bound by Yaakov. He was bound on the mizbeach by Yaakov. He was bound. He bound his son. See, in the end of the day, Yitzchak was not sacrificed. But yet, both days of Rosh Hashanah, when it comes to the Holy Rosh Hashanah, both days of Rosh Hashanah, we read the parsha of the Akedah, we read the story with Avram Avinu and the Akedah. Both days of it, we read first he was born, and then we read about the Akedah. Amazing. And but the but the but the Akedah never happened. What, what's the idea that the Akedah never happened? But there was still Ratzon. Yitzchak Avinu was okay. He well, he wanted to be slaughtered. Abraham Avinu, he said he wanted to do the Akedah. He wanted he wanted to slaughter his son. But he didn't have to do it. It was just the kisufim, the desire, the longing, the pining to serve Hashem. Malas <laughs> Hanesayin, that was the great, that was the great value of the test. Shel Abram v'Yitzchak, ma shenitz, shenitz, ratzu, l'shochet v'lomos al kiddash Hashem. The mere fact that he was okay with being slaughtered, because if this is what you want, Hashem, I'm okay with it. You know, from this idea came all the time that we gave our lives al Kiddush Hashem, and all the holy soldiers we have today, all the holy soldiers we have in Eretz Yisrael protecting us. How they go out? I mean, we have one of our Talmidim. Uh, Rabbi Yossi says, son, he should be well with his family. His son is one of the Chayalim that go into Lebanon. He's in Lebanon. His son is in Lebanon. He's, in a, he's, a, Golani, he's a Golani Chayal. He's a specialist. And he go, he's in Lebanon serving our nation. Where did he get the ability to be able to go to risk his life, to go into, the, <coughs> into this from the Akeda, from this very story? From this very story that Yitzhak Avinu was able to give his life for Hashem is where all the beautiful Chayalim today take their idea that they will give their life to serve and protect Am Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Vayadeshin is ratzu lazeh berotzin shalom be'emes nechshav kilo nechshach nishchat v'nikrav Al Gabayamizbayak. It was almost it was compa- it was considered that he was slaughtered. It was considered that he was sacrificed because he was willing to do it. Even though he didn't slaughter him. He didn't touch him. He didn't touch a hair on his head. <coughs> the whole idea of the Akedah is just that we have to pine and long to serve Hashem. That's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants us to desire to serve Him. It's not what we accomplish, it's how much we want to accomplish. It's what we want to accomplish. Uh, and then since Yitzhak merited at that time to have these these feelings of Kedusha Ka'ila Bemis Pemesiris Nefesh Kazer Misham Nimshach Kedusha's Nafshes Yisrael Shayatsum Imenu. That's where we get the ability today to give our lives, Al Kiddush Hashem, and how all the thousands and millions of Jews over the time. We're able to give their lives al Kiddush Hashem was only from the because we're descendants of Yitzchak. We're descendants of Yitzchak. Sheyatsumimenu. 
שיש בכל אחד ואחד ביסוד נפש קדושה מרוצה לימסה נפשי על קדוש השם. And every single one of us has a holy soul in us. And that soul is willing to give itself up. Give itself up for Hashem. נמצא שכל אחד מישראל נפשי רצוי נחוזק תמיד להשם יתברך כי כל אחד מישראל מוכן תמיד. Every single Jew is prepared. Shalem, Lomos al Kiddush Hashem. We're all prepared to die al Kiddush Hashem. If that ever, we, Hashem should protect all the Jews. But any time a Jew has to die al Kiddush Hashem, they get the ability and the wherewithal because Yitzhak Avinu was able to do that. Unbelievable. Ki bepnimius nafshay ritzaynay chazak mi'oyd ma'oyd la'ashem yitzbar because in the depths of our soul, in the very, very fine, the, uh, the inner depths of our soul, we all want to serve Hashem. Because we're all the children of Yitzhak Avinu. Yitzhak Avinu is our forefather. Yitzhak Avinu was our one that it was the one that was tied on the altar. And he was going to give his life for Klaus. And that's how we all do it today. And that's how all of us that live in Eretz Yisrael, and, 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 we, and we, we, we help the Chayalim, and the Chayalim do what they do for us, and they are, they are protecting us. This is where they get their idea. If you want to know where they get the courage from, they got the courage from Yitzhak Avinu. It comes all from here. In order to do the Ratzin of Hashem. This is a fascinating I, lesson. Really, to end off the week's parsha, to understand this, how 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 we all how we all have within within us, we're all we're all bnei Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. We're all the children of Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. Look at Avram Avinu. He's the he is the mamin sheba maminim. Avram Avinu is the believer. He's the one that found Hashem. That's the amuna that we have. We get from Yitzhak, we have the idea that we're ready to give our lives for our Kodesh Baruch Hu, and we're okay with that. Why? Because we come from Yitzhak. And we have our honesty comes from Yaakov Avinu. Titev Emes li Yaakov. Emes was given to Yaakov. Emes, we know, is the signature of our Kodesh Baruch Hu. Right? Barashas Barali Kim, as a Shemayim Vesar, the signature of that is, is the end is Emes. Emes. Why Emes? Because the Chosmai Shel Hashem is Emes. And whenever we speak the truth, and we say the truth, and this is the truth that we just learned now, this very truth is what binds us to be with Hashem. This binds us to be with Hashem, one with Hashem, and by us being able to be one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we are able to always be connected to Hashem, we are always able to be feel comfortable that we are B'nai Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. I want to thank everybody for joining. And uh, Avrivka, thank you for joining. And uh, Mordechai and, 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 uh, and Zushi and everyone else that's on and everyone else that, 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 that's going to listen. We get a lot of people that always listen to the Shiri after. Always we get a lot of people, Baruch Hashem, all over the world. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Hey, got a question? Yes, sir, Hello. yes. Hello? Yes. Isn't this a great, well, I, 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 I'm thinking this is a good example of Chesed and Gavura. The yes. The blessing of the two and what happens when they come together. Unbelievable. And you take Chesed and put it together with Gavura, you get Yaakov Avinu. <laughs> Avram and Yitzchak together give you Yaakov Avinu, right? The Midah of Chesed and Gavura gives you the Midah of Tferis, right? Chesed and Gavura... The, the, the by, byproduct of Chesed and Gevura bound together perfectly, synchronized together, gives you the Tferis. And that is, and that is Yaakov Avinu. And we're going to learn about Yaakov Avinu next week in Mitzah Hashem. I want to wish everyone a wonderful Shabbos. And, uh, and uh, I, want to, I want to thank everyone for joining. All right? I want to thank you for teaching. Bye bye everybody. It's of our pleasure. Bye bye everyone. Everyone have a wonderful week. Cold tooth.